Hey everybody, welcome to Sunday Morning Church. So glad you tuned in for on this uh, Sunday morning, March the 22nd. We're here in our online service. A little bit different than normal, but I guess that's going to be okay as well. But so glad you've tuned in and I uh, hope you've got your Bibles out, your Sunday School book out, because we're going to jump into our Sunday School lesson here in just a second. But before we go so, we want to... Um, Go before the Lord in prayer. Now, we have several prayer requests I want you to remember. Um, continue remember, uh, Sister Betty touched on, Sister Evelyn touched on. They need our prayers. Also, let's remember Miss Marjorie Socher. I keep her in our prayers. I'm sure it, there's other needs out there. And if you have a prayer request, please let us know. Uh, you can put it in the comments below um, just to... Let us know those needs that you have. Even though we may not be able to get together, we can still pray for one another. So type those prayer requests in the comments below. Text them to me. Uh, send a message to the church, and that way we can let everybody know, and we can still minister to one another. But let's go before the Lord with all these prayer requests, and also ask Him to guide our moments that we're going to spend together with one another. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus, giving you glory and honor. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity we have to come together. It may not be, Lord, in the way that we would like or a little bit different than we're used to, but thank you for allowing this time that we can have together. Now, Lord, as we come, we recognize that you are God, that you are in control, Lord, and you're working a plan and a purpose out. Father, we may not understand it, but Lord, we have faith in you. And God, we also present these prayer requests to you. Ask that you would move and minister accordingly. You see those that are hurting, those that are going through difficult situ situations, and Lord, and, and difficult times. God, your grace is sufficient, and I pray that you move and minister in only a way that you can. Now, God, I also ask that you would uh, be with these spoken requests, these unspoken requests that we all may have, those things we hold in the depths of our heart. Move and minister in only a way that you can. Father, those uh, prayer requests just being placed in the comments, Father, you know what they are. I ask that you would work in a special way. We love you. We need you. Father, And we just come against this coronavirus, Father. Uh, we ask that you would just uh, help it to stop, and God, that you would provide cures and um, just uh, remedies for this and keep one another safe. Lord, I pray for our elderly, those that are uh, susceptible to this virus. And Lord, that you would just, Father, just cause a wind to blow just to uh, eradicate it from this land. Lord, we love you. Bless this next few moments that we spend together. Lord, for we want to bring you glory and honor and grow as Christians. Lord, grow us to, to be the Christians you're calling us to be in this unique time that we're living in. We love you and we thank you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, I want to remind you, tonight we're having church in the parking lot. So at 6 o'clock, I want you to come in your vehicle. Now we're going to have somebody to help line up vehicles. So the little cars in the front, the big trucks in the back, so everybody can see. Uh, we're going to start right about 6 o'clock. Uh, this will be a going to be a flexible service because we're still figuring it out. We're going to see how it goes, but I'm excited about it. I think this will be a, a great thing that we can do uh, to utilize uh, just our still our facilities uh, the best that we can while honoring our president. So come out tonight, six o'clock, and we're going to worship together, but in the safety of your own vehicle. Uh, so that's going to be, be a great time. Be in prayer for that. And while you're at it, uh, be sure to share this video uh, and invite somebody to come out. Maybe just share this video so other people can watch and can see uh, that, you know, the gospel is not dormant, that we're still trying to spread the gospel and get the good word out there. So as we begin with our, our service uh, this morning, we're going to just spend a little bit of time in worship. Uh, we've recorded some of our some of our music here at the church, so we're going to play a couple songs. So right where you're at, 
It may be a little different, a little awkward, but just would you begin to meditate on the Lord? Psalms 30 verses 4 and 5 said, Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holy name. For His anger is but for a moment, His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So these next few moments... Just dial into these songs and just sing your little heart out right where you're at. Sing it to the Lord and maybe have a, just a time that you can connect with Him.
You know, I want to say a special thank you to all of our musicians and our singers for coming out the other day. We spent several hours trying to figure out how to record and make it all sound good. And hopefully it came through uh, your end quite well and maybe to bring you a little of encouragement and just to get you to connect with the Lord just a little bit through song and music. But again, thank you to all of our, our musicians, our singers for taking time out of your day and for coming up here. And we'll be sharing some more, some more songs in time to come. So if you get a chance, send those guys and gals a little text message and just thank them for uh, coming out if you would. All right, today we're going to dive right into our Sunday school lesson. Uh, I'm going to kind of teach, maybe preach a little bit this morning just to um, share with you. Uh, we're having a, uh, our unit has been on the book of Daniel. And today we're on lesson number four, coming from Daniel chapter seven, and it's titled Prophecy About Four Empires. Christ's everlasting kingdom will triumph over all. Uh, we've seen how Daniel, how he is in exile, and from a young man up to, to an older man, to quite a, I mean, he's, he's up in age, but What's amazing about Daniel is that how the Lord worked through him no matter what his age, where he was at, uh, what was going on in life, even though he was in a land surrounded by enemies, he wasn't in God's promised land, but he still held fast to the Word of God. He still sought after God, even when they would require his life, thinking they could uh, execute him by throwing him into a den of lions at 80-something years old. Daniel still prayed. Daniel still sought after God, no matter what was going on around him. You know, and that's really a, a great message for us today. Even though this virus has changed our way of life and how our nation is conducting business, how we're, how we're having to do church even, God is still God. He still has a plan, a purpose. He's working it out. We're citizens of His kingdom, so we're going to honor Him. And hes I believe He's going to put His hand about us. He's going to favor us and work. He's going to work things out on our behalf, and He's going to work out things through us and for us. And it's ultimately, as Paul says in Romans, it's going to be for our good. It may not feel good in the process, but it's going to be for our good. So in the lesson today, we're coming from Daniel chapter 7. And it, really, this lesson today gives us a brief overview of two visions that Daniel had. One vision being of four beasts and then a vision of God. Now, we got to remember the book of Daniel is really like the book of Revelation and the Old Testament. Uh, the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation and the New Testament, they're kind of like sister books. They go hand in hand. And today is a little bit more end times type message looking at that, but there's also some practical implications. And so we don't get caught up if you don't understand quite everything. I don't fully understand it all, but maybe this will be a little teaser for you to uh, grab some of these uh, thoughts and these ad ideas and do some research and to just entice you to dig into the Word of God a little bit more. But overall, this is the, uh, the key takeaway for this message. Evil kingdoms of the world will pass away, but the kingdom of God will last forever. Let me say that one more time. Evil kingdoms of the world will pass away, but the kingdom of God will last forever. That ought to bring you some comfort. And this temporal world that we're living in, we're really pilgrims passing through. The kingdom of God will last forever. Things are going to fade away. It's going to rust. It's not going to be here eternally. But God's kingdom, that is going to last. It's spiritual right now. It's going to come to a literal and physical uh, fulfillment one day. But this lesson provides some insight regarding, we're going to see uh, the Antichrist. And based on the interpretation of Daniel's visions and these four different 
beast. So let's, let's jump right in here. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn over to Daniel chapter 7. And, and we start looking at this first vision that Daniel had. Uh, there was four beasts, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 6. And Daniel, we got to remember, he's living in Susha, uh, best I could pronounce it, the capital city of Babylon. But the Babylonian Empire has fallen to the Medes, Persians. Daniel, he's in his mid-80s, we can estimate, and he was recently thrown into the lion's den, and God delivered him. And he now writes and tells us these dreams, these visions he had while he was laying in bed. So let's read the first six verses together. I'm reading for the New King James Version. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream, telling the main facts. Daniel spoke, saying, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. And four beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. Verse number four, the first was like a lion. Now this is interesting. The first was like a lion. He had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Verse 5, And suddenly another beast, a second, like a bear. It was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I looked, and there were another, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. And the, uh, the beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. What a dream! What a dream, a, really a vision to be given. So, so vivid, this imagery that Daniel, that he, that he saw. Now, with verse 2, Daniel tells how he saw four winds blowing contrary to one another from opposing directions. It was stirring up the sea that he saw. And as a result, these four, now we read about three, but there was four beasts that emerged out of the water onto the shore. Now the four winds are thought to represent spiritual forces that were at work affecting ungodly nations and events on earth, while the four beasts are thought to represent uh, ancient kingdoms. Now, Daniel, first he saw, he saw a lion with eagle's wings. Uh, it had the feet of a man, the heart of a man. Second, there was a bear with three ribs in his mouth. The third was a leopard having four bird's wings and four, uh, four heads. Now, scholars equate these beasts to represent three different empires. The lion was representative of the Babylonian Empire. The bear was representative of the Mede Persian Empire. And third, the leopard represented the ancient Grecian Empire, uh, Greek, uh, Greece. So uh, the, the chaotic, ominous scene described here is suggestive not only of the evil, unrestrained, I'm sorry, uh, not only of evil, unrestrained world of ancient empires, but is also suggestive of the continuing state of the world. You know, the world is plagued. It's stricken with the curse of sin, and it manifests through the evil deeds of people and nations. We still see that today, all over the world. And you don't have to go all over the world to find these evil deeds to see it. We can see it right here in our own nation. People, they, they live in fear. Fear of crime, fear of conflict between nations, never-ending economic and political changes taking place in the world. Uh, we have an election coming up for our president uh, and vice president this, this fall. The fear from uh, if one party gets in control, all these uncertainties, it brings about this fear. You know, but we should, we should not be alarmed nor live in fear. Okay? We don't have to live in fear. As the book of Daniel teaches us, as we're seeing, all this chaos and uh, uh, just uncertain times may abound, 
but it seems like it's chaos. It seems like it's uncertainty. God is still in control. He's in control. Let that just rest in your spirit for a moment. He's not panicking. He's not panicking because of coronavirus. He's not panicking because can't find no breads on the shelf at, at Sullivan. Or you don't get there when the bread truck gets there. Or there's no milk or, or whatever it is. He's still in control. God is God. He's the Lord God Almighty. Take rest in Him. In His sovereignty. Knowing that God, He's in control. Okay, I got a lot to go. Let's look here at the, the second part of uh, the, the main section. We see this fourth beast that came about in verses 7 to 8. Uh, let's read those two verses. After this, so after those three, he saw this third. After uh, this fourth, I mean. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. Now, he was able to describe the first three beasts, but notice the description that he gives on this fourth beast. Or should I say, really lack thereof. He's not able to equate it to anything he's ever seen before. All right. After, th after this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had, now listen, ten horns. Verse number 8, I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up from among them, before whom the three of the first horns were plucked out by the root. And there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. Now, here we see the fourth beast in Daniel's dream. It was different from all the three. He couldn't identify it with any particular animal. This beast was being described as dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong, had great iron teeth there in verse 7. But the most unique feature of this beast was these ten horns that was on its head. And the, the beast is believed to have represented the Roman Empire, which was the greatest of empires during this ancient uh, ancient time. Now, if all of this wasn't strange enough, verse 8 tells about a little horn. It arose in the midst of all these other ten horns. This eleventh horn plucked up three of the horns by the roots, took the place on the head of the beast. This horn had eyes uh, like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things, pompous things, as one translation says. Now, this description leads us to interpret the little horn as the man that we all call the Antichrist. Uh, that he's going to come to power. He's going to arise near the end of the age. Now, some think he will be from among nations that trace their national ancestry to the, back to the Roman Empire. There's all kind of theories and speculations on that. We're not, we're not getting into that right now. But world leaders... And governments, you know, they are moved, they're inspired by all sorts of motives, beliefs, influences, agendas. But due to the sinfulness of humans, all of these leaders, all of those governments, even when they have the best intentions at heart, you know, they're limited by their ability to bring real peace and harmony to the world. It's important that we, we realize nothing takes God by surprise. This dream was given to Daniel by God for all God's people, then and now, so that we can recognize that God has sovereign power and authority. Say that with me. God has sovereign power and authority. That includes power over human history. See, therefore, he knows the end of all things from the very beginning. He's seen the end from the beginning. Nothing takes God by surprise. Nothing takes him by surprise. See, whatever you're experiencing, or whatever is going on in your life, even as a result of this, again, this virus stuff that we're 
uh, experiencing throughout our nation, it didn't take God by surprise. It didn't. He's blessed us and he is, He's able to help us overcome this and give us means that we can still be His people and cling and hold fast to Him through all of this time. His grace is sufficient. Sufficient for all of us. Alright, so moving on to our second part of the lesson here. We see that this vision is in, interpreted. Now, we're going to skip down to about verse 15 to find the interpretation of this vision. We'll come back to those other verses. And in verse 16, we pick up, we kind of find Daniel, he's talking to an angel, and he asks this angel for a meaning of the dream. So let's read, uh, begin with verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things. Uh, verse 17, those great beasts which are four are four kings which arise out of the earth. Now we're going to skip verse 18. We'll come back to it in our last section. So look at 19. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured, broke in pieces, and trampled the residue with its feet. And the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up before the three fell, namely that horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellows. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them until the ancients of days came, and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it into pieces. The ten horns are I'm sorry, the ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be different from the I'm sorry, he shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the most high, shall persecute the saints of the most high, and shall in and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hands for a time and times and half a time. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. So, what an interpretation. The angel told Daniel that the four beasts in his dreams represented four earthly kingdoms, and their kingdoms would, well, they would succeed one another. Special attention is given to the fourth beast, believed to represent the Roman Empire then. And the ten horns are believed to be the ten nations that trace their political history back to the Roman Empire. Daniel had questions about that little horn that war warred against the saints of God and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came, bringing judgment against him and thereby causing the saints of God to receive the kingdom. Now, because the fourth beast is, is thought to represent the Roman Empire, many believe that the Antichrist, that little horn, that it will emerge from nations related to the ancient Roman Empire. But with all of that sale going on, when we begin talking about end times, the Antichrist, the apocalypse, people can get kind of weary or even get fearful. You know, we as Christians, we have hope. We have hope in the midst of how everything is breaking down and falling apart around us. We have a deep-rooted joy. It gives way to a hope because we know, as we started, this is, in, this is temporal. This world is temporary. All right, guys? We're citizens of an eternal kingdom that will last forever. The kingdoms in Daniel's visions, they were earthly. They was temporary. They will end. 
Ultimately, all who are saved by Christ will live as citizens of God's kingdom forever. Look at verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. <laughs> God has a plan and He's working it out, guys. Here it comes. Here's what we have to do. We need and we can trust in Him. It's just that simple, to trust in Him. Well, I say simple. It's easier said than done. But He gives us faith so that we can trust Him. The rule and power of the earth's kingdom will be given to, as in verse 27 says, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey Him. Reminds us of Revelation 11 and 15 that says, The kingdoms of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Amen. While many Christians have a curious interest in learning all they can about the Antichrist and who is to be revealed at the end of the, the, end of the age, you know, they sometimes hardly notice that the spirit of Antichrist, many Antichrist, is already in this world today, working all around us. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, I'm talking about the, the enemies of God, the enemies of Jesus, the enemy of the church. They're, they're varied. They're many. They're clever. They're smart. They're abundant. They're being spread about through society and our culture, working, trying to tear down what the Lord is doing. All right, so let's look at this third, this third unit here. We see that God's kingdom triumphs over all. We go back to verse 9 and we examine this second vision that Daniel had of God and his throne. I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. I watched then because the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As for the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. What an amazing second vision that Daniel had. Now, now, think of the context here. Daniel, remember, he's a Jew. He's living in exile. He's been taken away from God's promised land, from, from Jerusalem there. He's living in this foreign land under the rule of a government that is idolatrous. And yet, it would be easy to give up faith, just to quit. But Daniel, he receives a vision of these four kingdoms rising and then being thrown down and then one of God, the Ancient of Days, sitting on a chariot throne with fiery wheels, coming to deliver judgment against all who do evil. See, the Ancient of Days is God the Father. His white robe and white hair represents to his purity and his wisdom. The fire associated with his chariot throne is symbolic of divine judgment and purification from evil. Now, now this is what it speaks to me. God keeps the record. He knows and he sees. God has prepared his throne for judgment and will judge the world in righteousness. Nothing escapes his sight. Nothing happens without his awareness. He alone possesses all knowledge of all things and has the knowledge that makes him alone worthy to be the judge. All the wrongs that's been done to you, God sees. He knows. 
he keeps the record. But on the flip side, he knows all of my wrong, your wrongs. He keeps the record. But I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful for Jesus Christ, for all those wrongs that I've done, that the record was wiped clean. I'm thankful for salvation, for the blood that was shed on Calvary. Those wrongs were made right. Thank you, Jesus. Daniel saw God judge the little horn, the, the Antichrist, for those boastful, those proud, those arrogant words that he spoke against the Most High. And God will judge him guilty. He'll be thrown alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, as Revelation tells us. Daniel's vision of the Ancient of Days emphasizes God's wisdom as well as his judgment. The only one who can judge with perfect wisdom, you know, he also holds our future in his hand. What a confidence this gives us in his promise of eternal life that's given to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now let's go here to the last little portion, verses 13 and 14. Daniel says, I was watching... In the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. What a powerful verse. What powerful encouragement. Daniel saw the one, like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven into the presence of the Ancient of Days. Jesus, the Son of God, is the Son of Man. This terminology was used throughout the Old, I'm sorry, the New Testament. I, the lesson says 79 times in the four Gospels to identify Jesus as the Son of Man. And so Daniel saw the Ancient of Days give a kingdom to the Son of Man to hold dominion over all people and they will worship Him. You know, right now, Jesus' kingdom is experienced by those who believe in Him through faith. But one day soon, this spiritual kingdom, can I tell you, it's going to be brought forth. It's going to be established in literal uh, fullness when He comes again. Afterwards, Christ's millennial kingdom will be delivered up to God, as 1 Corinthians tells us. And the kingdom of God and Christ will endure forever. As you say in Luke 1 and 33, And of His kingdom there shall be no end. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. It, it, my mind just it, it takes us to Hebrews 12 and 28. It says, Since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. You know, as believers in Christ, our understanding of History, our perspective of the future, and our spiritual vision of things eternal should be determined by this simple truth. We are citizens of God's everlasting kingdom. We are saved by grace to live in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with God and Christ forever. Our lesson it closed with this wonderful little paragraph. It says, As followers of Jesus Christ, we must never lose sight of who it is we follow. Jesus was infinitely more than a Jewish sage or rabbi. We are disciples of the incarnate Son of God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator and ruler of the universe whose kingdom will never end. That should bring you hope and encouragement today. As it seems like things are shaking all around us. Uh, 
just so things are so uncertain right now, it may seem, and people are panicking and, and worrying. God's not panicking. His kingdom is going to last forever. He's in control. He's in charge. Cling to the cross. Cling and hold on to Him during this time. He will never leave you nor forsake you. When Jesus is in your heart, your mind's made up. We are citizens of God's everlasting kingdom. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, that you are in control, that you've made a way when there seems to be no way. Lord, that we can come and have such a relationship with you. Lord, that all this stuff around us that may be crumbling and we don't understand what's happening. People are given into fear and rumors are uh, abounding that bring about fear and make us uh, just panic, Lord. Father, I don't have to believe, uh, Lord, some of these things because I know you are in control. Lord, I'm choosing to believe you, that you have your hands about us. We are your people. And God, if you bring us to face some of these things, Lord, I get to face it with you at my side. I don't have to go, we don't have to go through these things by ourselves. Lord, guide us and direct us and help us just to reflect you. Thank you that in a temporary wor world, your kingdom is forever. We love you and we honor you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Before we dismiss, just want to remind you one more time. Tonight, 6 o'clock, we have our parking lot service. We're going to have music, preaching. Uh, we're going to be able to pray. Uh, we have our ushers. to. Our ushers will be like car hops to go from car to car, I guess. But we'll have people to help, uh, help park vehicles and get you lined up. So... Uh, please uh, just come and, and go ahead and be in a prayerful state and ask that God guide and direct our service. And uh, we'll have a, just a great time uh, fellowshipping with the Lord. So, 6 o'clock out in the parking lot. And I know we're going to have to watch the weather and the rain. If it's, uh, we'll, we'll, we may have to make a little bit of changes. But you know what? This is just a fluid situation we're in. And uh, we're going to adapt and uh, change and just go with the flow, I guess to say. We're not going to be scared or we're not going to panic because God, His kingdom's forever. He's on the throne and He's going to uh, bring His will to pass. Let's be sensitive to Him. God bless you. We love you guys. And remember, keep on keeping on. Keep up the good fight of faith and just trust and believe. See you at 6 o'clock tonight.